just wanted to make a quick video to show you how the articulating type of uh, 3D printed models work. And uh, so this stuff intrigues me. It's a fairly simple concept. And uh, this little guy here, which was the first one that I printed out, uh, it's a model, one of the many models available on Thingiverse. Um, essentially what happens is as it's printing out, it actually prints the, uh, the, the layers that is interlocked with each other are printed on uh, different levels so that they're not really touching each other or barely touching each other. Um, at the most, they'll basically just have like really thin um, layers. So as soon as you are done printing and you pull it out of the bed, uh, the first articulation attempt will basically kind of break it free. So um, pretty intuitive once you understand the uh, the basics of the concept. So I got done printing this guy out, and this is an actual snake, which is pretty cool. Another mo model off of Thingiverse. And I'll include all of the information, probably in a caption over here, on what specific uh, Thingiverse um, reference number this, these are, both of them. But this little guy here, I'm gonna see if I can move this a little bit more. Um, this one's actually, <laughs> It's about the limits of size for my for my print bed. Um, I have a 150 millimeters on every direction, including up and down. So, not a whole lot of room. This is an Adventure Three, Adventure Three from uh, Flash Forge. But I'm just gonna do the uh, quick removal to kind of show you how the whole thing turns out. And uh, I don't know if you noticed, but I printed this with a raft. I always do. Uh, I've noticed that the PLA that I use. Um, unless the bed is very, very cool, it will start melting the, the bottom layer as it's continuing to print. So eventually that bottom layer gets completely deformed. So to avoid that, I always use a raft on, on this one. Um, if it's too cool, obviously it's not gonna adhere and then you have all those issues where the extruder itself is gonna start moving the uh, chunks all over the place and then you basically ruin your print. So uh, it's a balancing act, but let's do this. This actually has been out of the printer for some time now, so it's pretty cool. I usually don't wait this long. I, I tend to remove them when they're fresh, but uh, this shouldn't cause too many problems because of the raft. So let's get to it. So with this one specifically, this, this bed is flexible. Um, so I'm just going to basically just do this on the corners and it starts kind of ripping off a little bit. And then over here, and uh, sometimes it'll pop out. So be quite careful if you're doing this with, with a large print as it could actually kind of hop out and jump onto the floor. So the wraps work on a very similar concept where they basically print out a layer and then they have this, um, they'll have a pattern on it that almost guarantees uh, this is not gonna fully adhere permanently to the first layer of the actual printout itself. So it makes it very easy to remove. I'm gonna start from the kind of like the middle section over here um, and then just see, just kind of get a feel for how things are and as you're moving around, you'll hear all those like poppings and stuff. So the that's mostly the wrap, but it could also be like the articulating points uh, in you know inside, kind of separating from each other. So, and by the way, this printout was done with all the default settings, which are not the highest res, but it actually turned out really good regardless. And for this sort of thing, you don't really need to go too high res, anyways. Um, if you're doing an actual like a some sort of figure. Uh, to paint and all that, and then you want to go a little bit more detail. But for something like this, which, which is mostly a tinker toy, there's absolutely no reason to go super um, detailed. And even with this default amount of detail, this still took about six and a half hours to print. So it was basically an overnight thing. I'll probably just speed this up a little bit and let you see the end result.
There it goes. The little. <gasps> wow, that was violent. <laughs> But I think the snake is still okay. But look at that. There's an entire middle section there that just blew out. So watch yourself when doing this. Watch your eyeballs. Watch your fingers. This is, this is breaking. I'll also link the specific PLA that I use for this printout. Um, I like it. It's done fairly well with a lot of models that I've printed out and parts. Um, I do notice that it tends to get a little uh, stringy at times when printing, but it's not a big deal. You can clean that up. But other than that, it seems to work really well. It turns out really smooth for the most part. Basically what's happening is the chunks of the raft are sticking over here and that is causing, this is probably not focusing properly, but what it's doing is that it's actually creating bridges. So uh, you can, with some patience, clean it up. It'll, it'll, it'll actually kind of break off because it's, it's a, that, that layer itself doesn't have as much adhesion as the rest of it, but it is still kind of a little bit of an annoyance, but no, yeah, we're done little by little. So here we go. This is the start of the show. A fully articulating snake, and it's actually very, very articulated. And bendy um, in comparison this guy has some very limited motion uh, it could only move so much like that and like that which is part of its charm so you can end up using this little guy as a as a keychain or something it's got a hole through his eyeball so you know um, and you can print them in different sizes and scales this guy here on the other hand is fairly articulated and uh, I still need to do a little bit of cleanup but for the most part, this turned out pretty good. So um, I actually thought about printing this in white just to make it look like uh, an actual skeleton. But uh, being how this is an actual imitation of a real head, I probably would have looked silly. I suppose you could paint it. But there you go. I mean, look look at the amount of articulation on this guy. This guy's like pretty much like a rope. Super flexible, super bendy. None of the segments broke while I was uh, removing it from the raft, which is amazing. Um, I mean, I didn't expect it to, but there was a little bit of uh, towards the tail end here, <laughs> pun intended. Um, this little guy here doesn't quite want to separate from its joint, and I'm a little concerned to try because uh, it looks crooked, which means that it probably, because it's so small, uh, that probably uh, melted a little bit more than it needed to, and during the uh, printout. So I think if I try to like bend it out of shape, it'll probably break off. So uh, we'll just call this little guy crooked tail and roll like that. Articulated figures on 3D printers. Well, self articulated. They print out like this. You don't have to put this together. It's completely sealed and contained. <laughs> 